all right so this is your good friend errol just checking out to see just giving yeah this is your good friend errol of course just um coming back to you live from another location generally you know just giving a shout out and of course i always like to come to you live from various uh location in everything to to kind of give you a little bit of vibes of what's happening all right okay all right bonjour comment ça va ah quebec are, um fans of quebec city i love quebec by the way i love quebec I, I love it all over quebec oh and also that beautiful chapel at the end of the um beautiful chapel way at the out like a, what's the name of that again said there's that chateau yeah beautiful beautiful Au revoir. <laughs> all right all right any of them okay yeah right okay Au revoir. all right so again one more time your good friend Errol coming to you um yeah there you go your good friend Errol coming to you. I'm always like to come to you and share some stuff with you just to let you know everything. How you doing? Just to let you know um, how is things going. And um, I, I like to 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 come to you live from where people are because one of the things that I practice to do each and every day is to actually not only talk to you but talk to general public about the gospel of jesus christ the gospel of the lord is not something that is placed underneath a well it's been said by the way you're listening to your good friend errol of course errol trench uh from trench altar ministry it has been said over and over that you do not i think it's written in the good book you do not light a candle and put it underneath a, uh, uh, um, well, underneath a stone anyhow, but it said a bushel, but you do not light a candle and put it underneath a bushel. In the, in the word it said, it's, uh, it does said in the, in the, underneath a bushel, it said, it, it said in the, in the book, it's, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody French today. <laughs> Okay, so it said you do not light a candle and put it underneath a bushel, but you put it up on a candlestick where it can be shine. Um, and in other words, I will say this to you, ladies and gentlemen. Again, like I said, my name is Minister Errol Trench from Trench Altar Ministry. Now, one of the things that I always say to individuals, you know, you do not want to hide the gospel. Most people go to a movie and they enjoy a good movie and most of their friends doesn't matter where they are most of their friends will hear about these movies they will hear about the show or they went to a place to eat and it's a wonderful dining place a place that they enjoy so what they have done they go and tell they, they tell the story about this great place to dine about this great place to eat and and that's one of the thing about word of excuse me they call it word of mouth because word of mouth you can is probably one of the greatest advertising is that you actually get a chance to tell the it, it's a real story now a lot of time i don't want to jump all over the place here but a lot of time people question the things about the bible when i said they question it and question well it's man this and man that if you jump into the area that is called the the new testament you'll hear it said things like the gospel according to matthew because matthew was there to see the real thing the things that has happened peter himself testified of the things in which he saw luke spoke about the things in which he saw alrighty and so on and it, it went on now Moses and other individuals like Joshua they witness the things that was different from Moses that was different from Peter and Paul um, our, our Peter our, and the, 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 the disciples so the good news of spreading the gospel word of mouth is 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 an awesome stuff now i have a que some questions i have some questions that i'm i felt compelled to ask to ask you i have some question that i really feel compassion to ask you and one of the question 
that I would like, some questions I'd like to ask you. Every now and then I am, every now and then I am around um, a lot of professional people, people with great, um, great ability, people with great background, people with great success ability. I don't want to always paint the picture that is only the, those kind of people that I hang around. That's not so. But I just want to make a point to be clear. I hang around, or not just hang around, but because of my profession and because of other things, the good Lord seems to open doors that I have access to all level of people. Now, on the other hand, that is a great thing. Because here's one of the things that God gave me the opportunity to, to, to meet people so I can be a witness, all right? Now, I don't just jump out and say, hey, 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 you must know the gospel of Jesus Christ. No. You know, one of the things that I love about the Bible is that Christ feed the people. As you notice, when he was up on the mountain he, and he preached the gospel, then he said, to Mo, he said to Peter, Peter said, the people are hungry, master, and it's now late evening, send them back to the village. Jesus said, no, let's not do that. Let's feed them. So sometimes people are a little bit, how do I tell somebody about the gospel? I'm not brave as Errol. I'm not brave to say, but it start with a hello. This gospel of Jesus Christ is not about trying to catch people, wrestle them to the ground and try to tell them anything. No. If you notice the, in the Bible, the, 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 the Jesus Christ and the woman at the well, Jesus Christ asked her for a drink of water. So let's make sure we understood it actually started the conversation with a drink of water. Now that conversation went back and forth uh, something of the nature and read the um the 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 the, the story of um, mary magdalene is it mary magdalene i think it's mary magdalene now then conversation started and it's all started with a drink of water believe it or not that story of where the it reached to the point where jesus christ said to the woman if you drink from this well you will thirst again but if you drink from this well in which i will give you is that mine is that mine you know good water when you all it. right thank you my friend we're actually just talking about water how you doing bonjour thank you. yes so um so the, the objective is, we were just talking actually about water and that was what happened. It's amazing how the Lord will, how the Lord will make provision because here's a gentleman was passing by and I said, is that mine? And he said to me, you certainly know good water when you see it. Isn't that amazing? And we were just talking about water. So point in case, point in case that it's all, that conversation started, oh, that conversation started with water. The, amazing the conversation with jesus and uh, uh, mary magdalene i believe it's mary magdalene it started with a water with water jesus christ asked for a drink of water okay and so on and that was how this story went so in other words ladies and gentlemen you and me do not have to force people to listen to the gospel it's all started out try to be nice to somebody you know what I'm saying to you? Throughout the whole place, look at the story of Matthew. Look at the story. Peter, Peter had an issue with Matthew, who was a tax collector. Did you notice how Jesus works around it? What I'm saying to you, he's a true example of the things that we should do. True example. This thing is not about telling anybody, I am better, you are worse. No, it's about you know a simple loving conversation we're not telling you know go back and look at the story of matthew and the dinner with with um with jesus christ being present at matthew's home take a look at that so you can see there was an invitation and it was at the invitation now i'm not telling you to call everybody and said can i come for dinner the benefit would be on you. 
but maybe you could also call them to come for dinner. So you understand, but before I even get to that, I have a couple of questions. And now, why did I say that, by the way? Why did I jump about this, um, why did I jump about this story? Um, why did I jump about this story about um, the, the, the professional and, and, and so on and, and, and being around people and spreading the gospel? Well, one of the things that I believe that people always talk about is a thing called a bucket list. Now, every now and then the Lord inspires something in my heart to talk about. And sometimes people write things on their bucket list. And that bucket list is the things that they believe that they would like to accomplish before X, Y, Z. Now, I'm not telling anybody that they should not have a bucket list. But I'm not sure if I do. I'm not telling anyone they should have a bucket list. I don't know. I mean, a bucket, what, I'm not telling you what to put on your bucket list, but I'm not sure if serving the Lord should be on your bucket list. I'm not sure. Because you see, it, if I said put serving the Lord on your bucket list, then what happened if your bucket list, if Jesus Christ on your bucket list, uh, on your bucket list was at 100 and you only reached 75? So in other words, because not everybody accomplished their bucket list. So when we talk about not accomplishing your bucket list, what if your bucket list, you did, it did that person bucket list did not make it to 100? Because 75 is where, you know what I mean? 75 on your bucket list is where it said serve him. But then you only reach at uh, four, um, 60. So then your bucket list would not generally been accomplished because eventually what happened there is some things now sometimes people write things on their bucket list right off the bat they know what they want to do now to be honest with you if serving the lord was the number one on your bucket list perfect i've been dealing if serving him was the number one on your bucket list then perfect we hope that you accomplish your bucket list at number one but if serving the Lord was on your bucket list at a hundred, if you only reach if you only reach fifty, then it's actually you just didn't accomplish your bucket list. Most people do not accomplish their bucket list. They still have a few more to go. But the most that they think was important would be maybe more or less accomplished. Not everybody accomplished their bucket list. So this is the reason I can truly tell you where things should be on your bucket list when it come on to him because you may not reach there and that is the reason why i could not say to you in your planning put him serving jesus christ on your bucket list i could never say that because it depends and where on the list between one to a hundred where on your list is he is that serving where on your list is that is that so i can't say put it on your bucket list unless it was going to be number one and we hope your whole bucket list you will already have accomplished at least one a minimum of 10 and the first one is perfect so i will say to you it's good great because your bucket list is supposed to be important but i don't know if if putting him on your bucket list then <laughs> I would hate that in your bucket list, it is in that order. I would hate your bucket list is about, well, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. Okay, so I'm going to climb Mount Everest. And then if I make it down Mount Everest, which is number 10, then number 11, I'm going to start serving the Lord. Actually, I hope you would start serving the Lord before you start climbing Mount Everest. You, you follow where I'm coming from? I'm trying to say to you that when do i start so serve the lord when should i start when should you start you know i think of this for a second did you realize that retirement is some is a lot of people work all their life and then look forward for retirement all their life and look forward for retirement did you realize that a lot of people that work all their life and look forward to retirement Sometimes do not see in retirement. So if, if, if working on your bucket list, if working on your bucket list, your bucket list was down here, but now 
this is where you're supposed to be, then that would not make it on your bucket list. You would have not, not you would have, that would have missed your bucket list. And it's not that you're wrong, it's just that, well, your bucket list was not accomplished. So I would trust that serving the Lord, if it's going to be a part of your bucket list, make it be number one. That's the only thing that I could say. Make it to be number one. But it should be number one, beside number two, beside number three, beside number four, beside number five, beside number six. I actually have a, a couple of questions here. Really, truly think about this. How much time, I, I want you to really think about anything in life that you have to do. Anything, doesn't matter what you have to do. Think about how much time do you have to do it. Think about how much time, for instance, an investment program. Sometimes people will say an investment plan takes maybe a good 25 years, 30 years to mature. This is in the financial world. To create a certain amount of equity, you need a certain amount of time for it to be valuable. It has to be sown. For the farmers, the farmer can say they have to plant. Have planting time and harvest time is not the same. So the question I got to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, please tell me how much time do you think that you have, has to serve the Lord? I could start counting. How much time do you think you have? 10 days, 10 weeks? A year, 10 years, how much time do you think you have to do that? You see, think about that clearly. You know, think about that because the, ba the greatest crystal ball cannot tell you how much time you have. Grandma, Grandpa, Liver, 98. Do you know if you have that amount of time? So how much time do you think that you have? That meant you haven't started yet. So when you start, how much time do you have to really, how much time do you think you have? Okay, the next question, there's a statement that was referred to. And, and this statement was extremely, this statement was a very, very important statement that Jesus Christ said. He said, so when you really think about it, you got to really think, what is it that you got certain time to, as a farmer, to harvest your, your, your seeds or whatever it might be. You have a certain amount of time to harvest the seed. How much time would you be able to, to, well, ask the farmer. Really, truly ask the farmer. Let's say corn, because corn is really during the, the corn is during the, the, so as I continue to say, the, um, in, in reality, we're talking about the timing, we're talking about the, the, the harvesting, we're talking about the, so, so the question, we, we talk a little about the, the, the harvesting, we talk about the, um, we talk about, so, so there's a question that I ask, and this question was a very, very important question, very important. And so this question was asked, and this, this statement was made, no man, not no man, any man, doesn't matter who they are, no man can serve two masters so the truth of the matter it all depends are you one of those individual who are serving two masters now there's a reason why it said no man can serve two masters very simple because it's kind of like you're gonna you're gonna love one and despise the other so so that's one thing for sure about uh, serving two masters. All right. So that's, and I don't want to just throw it out like that because I wanted to catch where I'm coming from. Um, so the next thing that I would like to ask you, and this is important, is how much time do you truly, uh, honest to goodness, how much time do you really think that you have? How much time do you think that you have or has to do what you want to do? How much time do you really truly think you has to, 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 Yes. How much time do you think you have? Like really and truly, I want you to think for a second, how much time do you think that you have? How much time do you really honestly believe that you have or has to serve the Lord? I, I would love, because you see, sometimes people think it's like an investment. You know, you know what I mean? It is, it is mentioned in the financial world that it's best to start invest early. 
it is mentioned that that it is best to start invest early because the earlier you invest the earlier you start investing the more the, well first of all the sooner you will have a return that not only that the sooner you'll have a return but the, the better been mentioned that the sooner you start so my question to you this very hour is how long do you really truly think that you has to serve him how long do you think like do you think a month, a year, um, 10 years, 60 years? How long do you really think? Now, that is a very, very important question. And these were some questions that I put together. The next one is most people says, if I have only known, if I have only known, if I have only known, if I've only known, I would have done different. Hello. Hi. You know what's funny? When he finished the journey, guess what he heard? Just dropped it and come on and follow me. That means nothing happened to it. Nothing happened. It didn't turn into anything because that's just to let you know. So sometimes the reality has to be the same. It can, you know, you cannot, you cannot give and take. It's the same. You cannot, under no circumstances, you know, figure out whether it's going to be today or tomorrow. Nobody knows. So that means sometimes you could be cheating yourself. You could be really, truly cheating yourself. I heard about a story, and I do not know if I can tell this story here. Um, I do not know if I can tell this story. But I heard about this story um, where it was a, it, it's a builder. And this gentleman is a builder. And he has been building, he has been building houses for many years. When I said he's probably one, known as one of the uh, very big builder okay known been been building for years eventually what happened somebody asked him to <laughs> you try right? the next oh hello oh you're saying her <laughs> so anyhow so the story of the builder what he actually did he um he worked for many years and he he was one of the top builder in the construction industry and um was very successful and not only that he was successful he was, um, and I heard this is a true story. Um, then he came to the place where he, he he should retire, must retire, because of his 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 journey in the industry as a successful uh, construction builder. And what did he decided to do? He decided to, to retire. However, something happened. The company in which he worked for say to him, "You know, you have built for us for many years." But he said, "I'm retiring. I would like to hang up." They um, hang up my my talent. I've done it for how many sixty years, and I'm um, I'm now would like to retire. And I want you to listen to this story. So the owner of the construction company said, "You know, you have done so well, but we want to ask you to build one more house for us. Build one more house." And he said, "I'm sorry, I'm going into retirement, and I do not have the time, and I do not wish to." to bill anymore because I am going into the retirement. They finally encouraged him to do, do us this favor, just build this last house for us. We, we beg of thee and everything, and he decided. They gave him all the specs, um, and everything was the best of the best in material. Everything, the quality of the material, the quality of everything, this was grand, grand house, okay? And after when, they gave him, he went out to purchase the material to build the house. And everywhere he phoned to get the material, they said it's going to take a while before that material arrive. It will take a while before that material comes. So because he didn't want to wait anymore, he asked them to give him the, uh, whatever they got. So most of every material that he get to build this particular house was, a he would not use at any time ever. That was not his quality. That was not his style. But anyhow, this time, because he was in a rush, he was in a hurry, all the material that he used for the house was really degrading. Not a quality, nothing. And so he built the house, but all cheap material. And then what you think happened? When he went to, 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 to say goodbye to the general owners and, and contractors and whomever they are, the builder, the building company, they said, we'd like to thank you for building that last house for us. 
And we know that it was your last work, so we wanted to present this house to you. Imagine, for all his years and all his life, he had been building quality houses. But now that the last house that he built was his own with the cheapest material. And it's not that that was what they asked him to build. He, all he didn't want to take, he didn't want to take the time to build it. I didn't want to took the time to build it. Ladies and gentlemen, do yourself a favor. Do not cheat yourself. Out of all the things that you go through in life, rough, tough, whatever it might be, do not cheat yourself from knowing the good Lord. Do not cheat him. Do not cheat yourself. You, you know, you, 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 you go through so much. Do not cheat yourself. You're listening to your good friend, of course, Errol. Coming back to you one more time. You can see, of course, from a busy activity place and, I, and, and everything. However, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And until next time, I hope that today something has been said that would be of benefit to you. Please do not wait. Ask yourself the question, how much time do I really have? Do, do yourself that favor, all right? Again, I want to thank you for listening, and I want to thank you for your time. Next time, we will talk again. Stay well, your good friend, Errol. Thank you. See you next time.